Hello and welcome to another Conversations with Dr. Westman. Today we're going to be chatting about diabetes and cardiovascular risk. Uh, there's a ton of evidence that suggests that folks with type 2 diabetes have an increased risk of cardiovascular disease. What is that risk and what can we do to mitigate that risk? We'll find out in today's episode. We also have a special bonus for you today, which is brought to you by Dr. Westman, and it is his new guide, Eight Ways a Keto Diet Improves Heart Health. I'll tell you a little bit more about this at the end of today's episode, and we'll also put a link for you in the description. So let's get started. Jumping right in. Eric, the evidence is clear. Um, folks with type 2 diabetes have a twofold risk uh, or increased risk, should I say, of cardiovascular disease. Can you explain why this is so? Sure. And cardiovascular disease, of course, means um, heart attacks, strokes, things that are really the number one cause of morbidity and mortality, meaning uh, uh, death and disability. Um, and uh, so it's a major factor that a chronic disease that you, know, you don't want to get, but it is so common in Western society or uh, modern society. So um, the reason cardiovascular disease happens has been thought of in the past as sort of a, a single-minded um, dietary sort of thing. And we were always taught that fat in the diet was something that caused fat accumulation on the arteries. And that hypothesis or that belief is kind of fading away. So yes, atherosclerosis or cardiovascular disease, when atherosclerosis hits the, the heart, it's called cardiac disease and vascular system anywhere. It could be in the aorta, the big artery of the abdomen, the, the carotid, the artery going to uh, the brain, causing a stroke if there's narrowing and uh, atherosclerosis there. So you know it's important to get all of the name language together. So atherosclerosis is the natural process of disease on the arteries that leads to narrowing and blockages. And it's the lack of blood flow because of these blockages that cause damage uh, because the heart or the brain can't get oxygen for a period of time. And so therefore there's damage. So, um, you know, I think the thinking is changing from this kind of single-minded um, one size fits all fat in the food being the bad guy to the other blood sugar domain. So we're not thinking so much about cholesterol in the, the food or, or the, the blood anymore. It's we're thinking about sugar in the food and sugar in the blood, which over time can cause prediabetes, insulin resistance, and something called the metabolic syndrome, and then type two diabetes. So when you go down this pathway of excessive sugar, in the, in the foods and in the blood, you get damage to the arteries, especially when you get um, outright type two diabetes, where uh, you have too much sugar in the blood all day long, this is damaging to the arteries. And um, there's some other cardiovascular related diseases such as stroke, myocardial infarction, and peripheral vascular disease. So in your opinion, which is the biggest risk factor that you, you know, see in your clinic today? Yeah, and uh, it's not just my clinic, it's in the research publications that are being done now with the, um, I guess the hindsight of, of not assuming that there's a, a cholesterol or fat in the food problem. When you look at independent factors toward risk of heart disease and stroke, it really turns out type two diabetes is the major risk factor. It's the major, and you can say that it's a cause really, because we know that the excessive sugar can lead to damage on the arteries. The inflammation starts uh, the damage process on these arteries. Uh, so uh, diabetes is actually uh, um, started many years before by a process called insulin resistance. So if someone, if your doctor says you have insulin resistance or you have pre-diabetes, this means that you're on that pathway toward type two diabetes and there's risk in, at these levels, uh, it's not quite as high as type two diabetes, but if you have elevated blood glucose 
metabolic syndrome, insulin resistance on blood tests, you have increased risk of heart disease, stroke, the cardiovascular disease uh, as well. Uh, and so you don't want to go down that path. <laughs> you don't, once, once a doctor is talking about prediabetes and putting you on medicines like metformin or, other, and most doctors today kind of are, see it so commonly, they don't like cry an alarm for you. They say, oh, don't worry, we'll just put you on a medication. I would rather have it be kind of alarming and say, you know, there are other things you can do other than medication. It's time to take it seriously now. So you, when a doctor says prediabetes, um, insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, your ears should perk up and take action. But there is some good news, isn't there? And that is that you have a solution that would mitigate these risk factors. So tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, well, it's been known for a long time that when you take carbohydrate away from the foods and the drinks, the blood sugar goes down, the carbohydrates raise the blood sugar. So when you take it away, the blood sugar comes down. So actually you can reverse and treat and cure insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, prediabetes, and type two diabetes with a low carb keto diet. And it's, it was used a hundred years ago for diabetes. And that was just forgotten. Uh, and the kind of fat is bad at last 50 years of since in the 1970s, everything got jumbled up and confused. So yeah, a keto diet is excellent for lowering the blood glucose and lowering the insulin and reducing the risk of heart disease by addressing the metabolic syndrome, which is triglyceride too high in the blood, HDL too low in the blood, increased abdominal circumference, increased blood glucose, increased blood pressure. So all of these things together are thought to be the cause of atherosclerosis and the keto diet addresses all of those. So now that the keto diet addresses these um, risk profiles or risk factors, should I say, what kind of time frame would someone expect to see uh, that, you, that you see in your clinic that would reduce their, their risk profile? How long would it take someone to re reduce their risk profile? Yeah, well, there's a range of time for fixing these things, but uh, I'm struck at how fast it can happen. Um, for example, recently I had someone who had been taking insulin for 20 years and was able to stop it in just four weeks. Four weeks off insulin and the blood sugars are normal. So now, th does that mean the heart risk is beneficial right then, I don't know for sure, <laughs> but we can actually fix type two diabetes very quickly. I would say most people, uh, and in the studies that have been published, most people will be on less insulin or off all of their insulin by, by 10 or 12 weeks. And then of course, with a, the stricter you are on a keto diet, the faster it'll happen. Uh, and uh, the papers um, in the, uh, like the Verda Health study, which has uh, all the different kind of staff and support show this to be true. Uh, now that Verda Health study was used an app and, and uh, check ketones and all that. But in Dr. Wolver's clinic uh, in Richmond, Virginia, she also published a paper showing that she could reverse type two diabetes in the clinical practice with just the staff that they normally have. So we have good evidence now published that in studies and in clinical practice that you can reverse type two diabetes, of course, also reversing type, um, excuse me, prediabetes, insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome. That's what the keto diet focuses on. So Eric, you are saying, let me get this right here. What you're saying is if you, uh, you know, address your, your diabetes, your prediabetes, your metabolic syndrome, um, if you address that by a lifestyle change, um, you can actually expect to see your cardiovascular risk profile improve. Improve, you know, I guess, I guess what I said is it can improve immediately. I mean, within three weeks off all of this insulin. And you see, it's the elevated blood glucose and elevated insulin that are the pro-inflammatory problems. Uh, you don't want, so a lot of people have thought insulin is a good thing 
to take it for type 2 diabetes, I don't see it as a good thing. The insulin level is already high in the blood if you have type 2 diabetes. You won't fix it by giving more insulin. What you want to do is fix the diabetes by addressing the lifestyle. And there are many that can be helpful, a low-carb keto one being one of the best because it lowers that glucose and insulin you know, immediately and to very low levels. Uh, often within the first few days. So um, the, ass assessing how fast the risk goes down is a little harder. Um, and, and I'm not saying that this is going to fix your, your clogged arteries if, you know, overnight. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that the inflammation causing the risk will go away very quickly. Uh, and uh, we don't have great evidence yet that you can reverse the you know, damage on the arteries itself. There's some kind of urban legends and anecdotes out there that it's not solid enough science for me to, to say that, yes, it will reverse already established uh, artery plaque or, or lesions. We don't have that information yet, but it's, it's really exciting to see the, the process change so fast on a keto diet. So, Eric, before we leave, uh, what is the take-home message for today? Well, type 2 diabetes... Prediabetes, insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, these are the main risk factors for atherosclerosis, which leads to heart disease, stroke, and really the major cause of death and disability today. Fantastic. Well, that's all we have time for today, folks. Uh, be sure to watch next week. We're going to be talking about saturated fat and cholesterol. Before you leave, a reminder that we have a special bonus for you. Um, which is eight ways a keto diet improves heart health, brought to you by Dr. Westman. If you're worried about your cardiovascular risk, this guide is definitely for you. We also have a brand new online course called End Your Cholesterol Confusion with Dr. Westman. And this course is going to be uh, epic and will empower you to understand everything that there is to know about cholesterol, risk factors, reading lipid panels, and so much more. Um, there'll be a button in the description if you want to join the waitlist. Um, and if you want to learn more about any of our upcoming courses, you can find us at Adapt Your Life Academy. Dot com. Eric, thank you so much. And we look forward to catching up with you again next week for another great episode. Take care.